I don't have any riding footage for you, but I can give you this one. I was planning on saying more. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's a chopper. Hi, my name is Cole Yellowbird. I'm from Innisfil, Alberta, Canada. And I'm gonna show you some of the stuff I got going on in my shop. Mainly this 2004 BT600 chopper that I built last winter. So I'll give a little history about the bike. I bought it completely stock two years ago. It's a 2004 VT600. It had 3,000 kilometers on it, so nothing. The buddy that sold it bought an Indian, and I bought it because I had the complete intentions of doing something like this, not to this degree, but when I bought it, I was, because I seen online a lot of people doing the Hardtail thing because of the way the backbone goes, you can cut the frame and pretty much what Scott did to his, keep that, those two uh, funky backbones going. But when I bought the bike, I put a little sissy bar on it, took the speedo, took everything off, the electrical, still ran the original controls and stuff, but that bike ended up getting stolen and the tank was smashed, which I was originally just gonna keep the stock tank and just do the, the little uh, wishbone hardtail to it so the tank was smashed so I had to get a new tank obviously for it so I was like fuck it I'll just cut the backbone out and that's what we ended up doing here anyway I'll bring you in for a closer look so the first thing I did with the build cut the backbone out replaced it with that single tube and then I bent these hardtail wishbones with a Princess Auto pipe bender. And it kind of doesn't do the greatest job, but I used some pretty thick wall tubing, so it's okay. I don't have a tubing notcher, so I did all this by hand. I shaved all this down just so it would fit in, plug welded it. This is the stock swing arm. Kind of like how everybody does it. But when I built it, I didn't measure anything off the stock bike. I just kind of eyeballed it. And so you'll see that the clearances in here are pretty tight. And I could get the engine in with the valve cover off, but I couldn't get the valve cover back on. So it took me a while to figure out that I had to take the cases off, the case covers, and then you you just kind of hold your tongue the right way, it'll fall in there. Take some doing though. TC Brothers tank, TC Bros, not a trailer fender fender. I made this E-Tank sticker by Zero Given. It was actually uh, the second tank, the second E-Tank I built, the first one I wasn't too happy with so no front brake I just flipped the entire frame upside down like a BMX bike and then just spun the front tire and zip cut the whole stock oh this is the wrong side <laughs> zip cut the the brake mount off 
I hand shaved the fork legs. No lathe at that time, so I just zip cut it all, got it pretty close, and then with an orbital sander, I sanded it all down and then polished them. Same thing with the front end or the top clamp. I originally was running two triangle lights on it and I was using the original speedo mount for one and then I had one down here but I kept breaking them off they kept falling off I didn't I was the first time I ever built a hardtail so I didn't make it out of thick enough material I just kept snapping the mounts and then I kind of got over that look and when I got my mill I went a little crazy and just milled fucking everything off this triple tree I uh, or this uh, top clamp I filled the holes with TIG weld, milled it down. I built these bushings on the lathe. They're all stainless steel, 304 stainless steel. I was originally running these Flanders style, uh, they were four inch risers from Throttle Addiction and I had little mini apes on it. But then I decided I wanted to run, I was gonna make a foot clutch setup for it and so I wanted super tall bars, so I made, extended these four inches for the mini apes. But because I didn't have the foot clutch set up, I, I put my rabbits on it and fell in love with those. And I've since kind of ditched the idea of the foot clutch, but these are the stock, actually the stock bars for the Honda Shadow. I cut them down about three inches each, each side and they give it pretty, I've been running these for a while. It's pretty aggressive. You can ride it pretty hard. They're little, they're kind of like T-bars, I guess. But uh, I had 14 inch apes on here too. And I really like those. I like the look of them, but they're too high. This, because the sissy bar is so high, I guess I haven't even talked about the sissy bar. Because the sissy bar is so high, it vibrates a lot. And so I actually picked up, I picked up a, another a stock top clamp to run. So I'm gonna run the rubber bushings. These are all just solid, right? So I'm gonna rub the rubber bushings with the stock risers with mini apes and see how those go. Onto the sissy bar. I built this on the floor. I just kinda, I measured the whole bike where I wanted it to mount, built it on the floor, bent it all. And these are uh, bungs from TC Bros, kind of just threaded. And then when I built the sissy bar, I ended up noticing that it was from the very tip. It used to be six feet. I've since bent it and lowered the fishtails, but it used to be six feet tall and it was out something like three eighths of an inch. And so I ended up remaking the whole thing. And then I built the exhaust out of a built well exhaust kit. And I'm running baffles in here, right about here. I went off-roading with this bike, like kind of just down some gravel dirt roads and I snapped all of the, the mounts off the sissy bar, including the, I snapped that bolt and the whole thing was just hanging off the, there's no other mounts to the frame. So the whole thing was just hanging off here. Nothing, nothing broke, so. It's a Shinko Enduro front tire. I'm not a big fan of it. It doesn't handle too, too well. I've got a, another project. I might switch it over, GS build. This headlight is just uh, the cheapest LED little running light, I guess, for for uh, for like a fog light or whatever you'd use it for. And then I put it on the lathe. I turned off the face because it had kind of like a brow it wasn't really into. And then it's just with a little P-clamp there. Running the now I'm not an advocate for 
TJ Brutal Customs. When I ordered his stuff, I bought it on Black Friday because it's his stuff's ridiculously priced in my opinion. But this Velocity Stack, TJ Throttle Sleeve. Well, no, it's the Stock Throttle Sleeve, TJ Throttle. And then before I knew you could get all the bungs on bunking, I bought this from little overflow tube from TJ Brutal. Pretty clean little unit. And then a jet kit, obviously I, it's running. Oh, I'm not too sure. And then when I had, last winter I'd bought an AEM uh, air fuel mixture gauge. I welded in the bong here. And if you breathe on those things the wrong way, you foul the sensor. So I used it for maybe five minutes, one ride. Found out it was idling a little lean. But that's about it, took it off. The seat was done by Haas Leather out of Swift Current Saskatchewan. I built the, I built the pan, sent him the pan and he gave me this, it's cowhide, it's leather. And then on the bottom side, it's all horse, horse fur. And then I moved the coils down to here. New uh, battery box, it's just a stock battery. I know people run those little tiny little tiny uh, anti-gravities or whatever, but I already spent enough money on the bike. I didn't need to spend $300 on a battery. But then I used automotive seven millimeter wire uh, spark plug cables. And these ones are for a motorcycle, but the kit wasn't long enough for where I was relocating the, relocating the coils. So I just put the automotive ones on. And then there's no key, it's just, there's my ignition on and off. And then I got another uh, momentary lever on the other side for starter. I shaved down the, this is the stock clutch lever, cut off everything and then just shaved it as much so I could just with a grinder. Turned out pretty clean. Running Vans cult grips like everybody else. Really comfy. Almost forgot. This tail light is from Prism Supply. I often get asked why I would put a $200 tail light on a Honda Shadow. Because it looks nice. So everything was pretty much done by me. I didn't, uh, didn't really do the wiring. My, I had a buddy come over and he kind of fucked with the stock harness on it. And I'm, it's the one thing I'm not too happy about because he did it, he got it running, and then I just started cutting and hacking shit together. Like there's no soldered joints or anything. It's all crimp connections and heat shrink. And then I loomed it all together and it's just stuffed in here. Like if I, if I pull this seat, it just, it'll give you PTSD seeing inside that E-tank. So that's the one thing I would like to change. Uh, late last year, I bent the sissy bar down. This used to be just straight. Didn't re touch anything up. This is all powder coat. So this is a high temp powder coat, same stuff that's used on the exhaust. Didn't last too long. Started burning off. Heat wrapped the exhaust after last season because I kept burning my boots. And then the color is also powder coat. I sent it to a guy, new fab coatings in 
in uh, Lacombe, Alberta, and it's a cosmic white and a shattered glass clear. So it's white with a silver flake and a clear with a silver flake. So in the sun, it's pretty shiny. My old lady often asks why I gotta be so extra. I'd originally spent a bunch of time polishing everything. And I've since learned that if you're gonna ride these things as often and as hard as I do, that stuff's not gonna last. So I kind of go for the brushed, the brushed look now, just hit it with a wire wheel and call her good. These are just MGO fishtail pipes. Clamp on. I'm not too sure. I had an old Kawasaki Vulcan that I crashed in 2015. And these were the highway pegs, so I stole those and just clamped them on. So when you got a support yourself bag full of shit, you can lean back and be pretty comfy, especially when the rabbits are on there. It's a pretty comfy little, little ride. It's got four inch slugs and these came from Italy and I ended up having to order them, send them to Mick the mechanic in Ireland and then he had to send them to me. So I paid way too much money to get these things over here. When I probably could have just went to a machine shop and said, hey, can you turn these down for me? But you learn I'd ever, never bought or dealt with anything like this before. So this is my first build, so. I'm running 41 tooth rear sprocket. Just kind of pick up the RPMs a little or drop them down, I should say. Inline fuel filter. It was rubbing pretty good. So it's got some rubber and this thing's held together with zip ties. Stock foot controls. I'm happy with them. When I built the hardtail, I didn't have a jig or anything. I just had it on this bench that I made. This is actually out of a, at an old Astro van that I kind of camperized. And this was all the interior. I sold the van, pulled the interior out, made that bench. But I didn't have a, I didn't have a, a jig. So this whole thing was just on blocks, ratchet strapped to, to that thing. And... I should have put a spacer in between here because when I built the rear, I lost these, these sucked in pretty, pretty substantially. And I got a little bit back when I put this cross tube in, but still when I welded that, it sucked in. So I ended up having to shave the spacers, the wheel spacers. I put a Motion Pro chain tool on it at the very end when I was putting it back together. Motion Pro chain tool on it. Set the set the marks on the axle. And then depending on which way that chain tool was, I could tell how much had to get shaved off of each side. And it's still a pretty tight fit, but it it gets in there, it works good. And like I said, I had shitty, shitty P clamps in here. Just kind of like plumbing clamps or whatever you'd use. Just kind of like if you were, had some piping to put into your ceiling or whatever. That's what was holding it. And they worked really well for a long time until I went off-roading down some gravel, fourth gear. And I ended up snapping everything, bent all these up. And so now I shove some rubber in and everything's held together with 
wire and I gotta find a better solution. They'll probably just stay that way forever. Before I had the before I had the mill and the lathe, I made solid riser bushings just out of a washer and some tubing and then I TIG welded it. TIG welded it and sanded it down so they just perfectly, they landed perfectly flush and then a big washer underneath. And that was before I ended up cutting the, those big aluminum uh, bushing mounts off. So it's got a, it's got the mixture screw, whatever you call that, running a 50 pilot jet and a 142 main. It runs pretty good. Velocity stack. I capped off all the vacuum lines and cut down everything I could off the for emissions and for the the coolant. Everything's kind of capped off where it doesn't need whatever it doesn't need, it doesn't have it. It's just bare bones. So I guess we'll start it. one more thing I wanted to touch on. The rear tire is a 150-90-15, just a common Dunlop tire. I know guys like to run those vintage car tires and all the lane split guys like those vintage tires, but I just wanted to put something common on it just in case, you know, you get a flat or whatever. Those, those are the vintage tires. I just don't know if they'll fit the I don't know if they're any taller, like they, they may fit on there, but the, the way I, I built, I set the rear fender to this tire. And so I know that if I wanted, if I blew this tire up, I could just get another common 150, 90, 15 from the store, the local Honda store or whatever. So that's what that. I originally had named this bike Snowblind. I'm a huge Sabbath fan. And so... My buddy Amber at Little Bear Goods, she makes like custom pennants and shit. She cut me out these these decals out of, it was a baby blue and gold, 70s print decals. I was going to clear coat on the tank. It said Snowblind, but I don't do cocaine anymore. So I figured I didn't really need that to represent my life. So I ditched that idea. I don't even know where those decals went. She did a hell of a job though. It's just a really good starting point to build a chopper the way the the way the rear goes like you can you can hardtail them really easy you don't need to go spend you don't need to spend as much as i did but you can you can 
hardtail them for next to nothing. Just get some, go find some scrap steel in your local dumpster and fucking heat it up and weld her in. other bikes this is just a stock it's Kawasaki Vulcan my old lady rode learned to ride on it sold it to my sister we replaced it with 95 883 Harley it's the first Harley I've owned and I'm really stoked to start working on it it's gonna get the chopper treatment I use that word lightly that term lightly chopper it's not getting hard-tailed it's just getting some over forks and skinny seat and you know we'll ditch all the electrical here when she's comfortable mint little bike it's fun and then another project started building this it's a gs 1000 76 suzuki gs 1000 and i wanted to build i was listening to a lot of danger dance talk shop and he was building his adventure bike. And I got really stoked about the idea of building my own adventure bike. And so it's gonna get like little, I don't know how to say it, pan panniers, panniers, the fucking hard bags. And then I'll make a aluminum seat pan to kind of to me mesh in with the tank. And then I'll make a tank for all the electrical I'm going to end up building, at my work, we build turbo kits for snowmobiles and we build, uh, we build uh, air boxes. And so I'll end up building a custom aluminum air box for the carbs, for the motor, but it's not going to have, it'll be pretty bare bones. I've got new suspension for the rear. I got new uh, fork springs for it. I'll end up shaving the fork legs and then I've got a set of Renthal bars that goes on nice tall enduro style seven eighths bars, motion pro throttle, just kind of a bare bones dirt bike, I guess. I'm not sure a thousand CC dirt bike, I probably going to handle terribly off road, but it's, it's mainly, I want to, I want to rip down gravel roads and stuff for if I want to go camping with it or whatever. We'll see. We'll see what happens with it. I've kind of lost interest. Actually, I'll show you the, uh, I shouldn't say lost interest. I got busy having a kid. I built, this is my junk tent. <laughs> and so for the GS1000, I ended up taking the stock headers, cutting them at the mufflers. I shortened them way up, took these Ys, I switched them both sides so that instead of exiting at the edges, they went to the center. And then I kind of fucked around with pie cut exhaust. Four into one. And it goes from inch and three quarter to two inch at the Y. And then I just got a two inch really shorty resonator. These are all, this is all car. 409 stainless, so it's all for car exhaust, but it's a lot cheaper than 304. Made my own bracket, bent it up, TIG welded it on. So, sounds pretty cool. It's nice and quiet. I'm not really that huge into super loud. Couldn't tell I missed that shift. 
I was gonna do a better one for you, but I think that pretty much sums up the kind of person I am. That one. <laughs>